I left you with this problem last time. We have a uh, fairly fairly simple model here and uh, some questions that are des designed around this uh, simple model. And you have some uh, you have densities and velocities for these two layers. And um, the problem is to assume that an incident wave with amp amplitude 1 is transmitted through the boundary between layers 1 and 2 and is reflected off of this um, perfect reflector uh, back to the surface. And then you have some issues to consider. One is, what is the amplitude of the wave that's returned to the surface? So it goes down, it reflects off this interface, it comes back up to the surface. What is its uh, amplitude? Remember we are considering uh, spherical divergence, divergence losses. We're assuming that we have a plane wave. And we're also assuming that this is kind of a local uh, problem, so we are ignoring uh, absorption or attenuation losses. And so the two-way transmission amplitude, remember, is a product of upgoing and downgoing transmission amplitudes. And you're to show that this is equivalent to an energy ratio. And then lastly, uh, what is the energy loss associated with two-way transmission through the boundary? We also showed earlier when we were working with the wave equation, we de derived several relationships. We came up with the uh, definitions for the reflection coefficient, the transmission coefficient. And we noted effectively that all you really need to know is what is R sub P12 in this uh, two layer problem. Uh, the reason you only need to know that in order to determine the transmission coefficients and and the, and the transmission coefficients for velocity as well as pressure and the reflection coefficients for velocity as well as uh, pressure is that there are several relationships that we came up with. Uh, we noted, for example, that the reflection coefficient coming up uh, for a wave coming up from the bottom and reflecting off of uh, layer two uh, would be negative of the reflection coefficient for the wave coming down from the surface and reflecting back up to the surface. So. We also noted that T sub P12, and that would be the transmission for a wave going from layer 1 into layer 2, that that transmission coefficient would be equal to 1 plus R sub P12. And that T sub P21 would be equal to 1 plus R sub P21, but R sub P21 is equal to minus R sub P12. So we have 1 minus R sub P12. So again, these um, terms, the transmission coefficients, the reflection coefficients, not only for pressure but also for velocity can be determined from this uh, reflection coefficient between uh, layers 1 and 2, uh, which has a value of 0.246. So we had to, um, we had to determine a couple, couple things. We had to determine the amplitude of the wave returned to the surface. Uh, and in order, in order to do that, we had to calculate the fractional amplitude transmitted through the interface between layers 1 and 2 going down, and then between the interface on its return to the surface. And then again, we're assuming that we have this uh, perfect reflector. Uh, this is our reflection coefficient for a wave coming downward and reflecting off uh, this interface. Uh, this would be the reflection coefficient uh, uh, the representation of a wave coming up and reflecting back back down into the subsurface and and then we're emphasizing a uh, um, just th this is more of a thought problem than a realistic problem because uh, in order to do this you'd have to have an infinite uh, velocity or an infinite density uh, uh, to get a reflection coefficient uh, equal to one so the point here is that we want to um, have whatever strikes this surface be totally reflected uh, back up towards the surface. So we don't have to consider any losses or any amplitude reduction associated with uh, this layer or any of the layers beneath it. So the transmission coefficients, um, we have uh, T sub P12 going down, that's 1 plus R sub P12. Then we have T sub P21 going up. That's 1 plus R sub P21, which is equal to, as we said, to minus 
1 minus r sub p12. So that we have t sub p12 equal 1 plus r sub p12, which gives us 1.246. And then we have t sub p21 is equal to 1 minus r sub p12 is equal to 0 0.754. So the fractional wave amplitude reduction is T sub P12 going down this way times T sub P21, so it would be the product of these two terms. And that would give us a point uh, zero nine four. Now what we've incorporated here, the, when we are thinking about the returned amplitude, the amplitude that comes back up from this reflector, this perfect reflector, is going to be the amplitude of the source, which we said we're going to let equal one, one unit, a unit of something. And uh, so we have these two terms that we just calculated, T sub P12 times T sub P21. And then we have this perfect reflector here. If we didn't have a perfect reflector, we'd have whatever this reflection coefficient was between a layer two and a layer three. But we know in this case, we're just uh, Assuming that this is equal to 1, so that this uh, sequence of factors is equal to 0 0.94. So in part 2 of the problem, uh, the two-way transmission amplitude is a product of upgoing and downgoing transmission amplitudes. And you were asked to show that this is equivalent to an energy ratio. Well, remember we said that energy, uh, we, could, we could represent energy in, in these kinds of problems as the uh, product of the uh, pressure times the particle velocity. So let's come back here and take a look at the transmission coefficient T sub P12. Remember uh, j just a basic definition for the transmission coefficient is that we have P sub T12, uh, the uh, pressure uh, uh, transmitted through the interface between layers 1 and 2 over that pressure, the pressure of the incident uh, wave, would be equal to 1 plus R sub P12. That's just the definition of the transmission coefficient. Um, well, we, we actually derived this, so it's, it's a, a definition, but it's a, one that we can understand. We can understand you know, where, where this term comes from. And T sub P21 coming back up is 1 minus R sub P12, just, just because we have this uh, relationship between uh, R sub P12 and, and uh, R sub P21. So we get 1 minus R sub P12 for the wave coming back up. And um, so this uh, we can also express in terms of the velocity. We know that R sub V12 is equal to minus R sub P12. So this is 1 plus R sub V12, which is equal to the transmission coefficient for uh, the particle velocities going through this uh, layer, going downward through this layer. And that would just be the ratio of the velocity, the transmitted velocity between layers 1 and 2 over the incident uh, particle velocity. And so we have this uh, product, T sub P12 times T sub P21. We know that these transmission coefficients are ratios, in this case of pressures, and in this case of velocities. So we have the product of the two. It's P sub T12 times V sub T12. This product is effectively the transmitted energy. So it's in the form of an energy term. A pressure times a particle velocity that gives us power per unit area, effectively. So we have the transmitted energy over the incident energy. So this is an energy ratio, just as we were asked to show. So the third part of the problem is to answer this question, what is the energy loss associated with two-way transmission through the boundary? So we know what this, this product here is, T sub P12 times T sub P21. This is an energy ratio, uh, E sub T over E sub I. And T sub P12 times T sub P21, we show that that's equal to 0.94. Now this corresponds to the fraction 
of the downgoing incident energy that is transmitted back to the surface. So the fractional energy loss corresponds to, we just calculate the difference between the incident and the transmitted energies and divide that by the incident energy. And then we could separate these out into two uh, quotients. E sub i over E sub i is one, E sub t over E sub i, this term here. So we have one minus 0 0.94 or 0 0.06. So the energy returned to the surface is fractionally reduced by 0 0.06 or 6% of that initially passing downward through the interface. So we've answered this um, uh, third part of this problem here. We've lost 6% of the incident energy in going through this interface uh, and going downward and back upward through this uh, interface. So here I'm going to leave you with uh, another problem, and in this problem um, we've got a wavelet here. And uh, not to complicate things, really your focus will be on this peak amplitude. But this pressure disturbance uh, travels down through the layer shown below. And it reflects off of the top of layer 3 and returns to the surface. In this case we don't have a perfect reflector. Uh, we have a, a layer with different uh, density and velocity. And it, I should also note that the ray paths that are shown below are coincidence source and receiver or normal incidence uh, ray paths. And the downgoing and upgoing ray paths are shown separately to note specific points along these downward and upward paths. So, So the source and the receiver are basically coincident, and uh, this angle is equal to zero. So we have these um, three layers again. Uh, first layer, 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter with a velocity of 1,524 meters per second. Think of this as a water layer. So this could be a marine uh, environment. Row 2, 2,000 kilograms per cubic meter. We're getting into the uh, sub-water um, bottom um, sediments, uh, fairly low density, uh, velocity um, increase a little bit higher. Uh, and then we get into something a little bit more characteristic of a hard rock with a density of 2,500 kilograms per cubic meter and a velocity double that of the uh, water velocity, about 3,048 meters per second, and you're asked to, uh, in this problem, to de determine what the amplitudes are at these points A, B, C, and D. So you might construct a simple table and um, consider not only the pressures at these points A, B, C, and D. Well, A is obviously uh, one, uh, but then you know, think about what happens as you go from A to B. You've got a certain pressure which is transmitted into the second layer. So that would be your pressure at point B. And then it's reflected off of this interface. So that pressure will be, again, factored by this reflection coefficient and so on. So that we come back up through this layer. We have uh, another factor of the transmission coefficient. Uh, coming back up from the uh, layer 2 into layer 1. So the things to uh, consider, you know, as you, as you dig into this problem is to follow the wave front through the subsurface and consider how its amplitude changes as a function of uh, energy partitioning. Consider only transmission and reflection losses. So again, we're ignoring the geometrical divergence. We assume that we have a uh, plane wave and that we're looking at behavior locally that, uh, uh, or at least, you know, obviously we're just ignoring ab absorption losses for the time being. Uh, for convenience, we're considering, uh, like we did before, we're considering that the amplitude is equal to, uh, uh, the source amplitude is equal to one. And we're interested in the relative changes along the travel path. So initial pressure and velocity can be arbitrary. 
the amplitude at the point A is simply the source amplitude, and we'll let that equal to 1. And at point B, we have transmission through the interface, as we, as we mentioned, separating media 1 and 2. Hence at B, the peak amplitude and the pressure wavefront is T sub P12 times P sub A. And um, for C and D, you just continue to incorporate these factors and do similarly for the velocities. So uh, for, for next time, we'll discuss the solutions uh, to this problem and we'll generalize to a multi-layer system. So again, uh, thanks for joining us and uh, hope you'll uh, join us again uh, on the next video.